Evangelist Gina, thank you for waiting. We're ready. Whenever. Yes, Lord. Appreciate your mercies and your grace, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, yes, we love you. Yes. Thank you today. If there is anyone that is headed to your Bible study, Lord God, we ask that you just give them safe traveling and safe passage, Lord God. Father, we ask that you remove anything from us that is not like you, Lord God, and that you would give us just a deposit of your spirit, Lord God. We ask yes. that you rest yes, Lord. and reign within each of us, Lord yes, God. Lord. And we ask that he brings those things back to us which we have learned. At the proper time, Lord God. Yes, Master. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus. All right. Amen. So as you see, I did hand out a um, sheet for everyone. And this kind of will jog your mind for the things that we are doing. Oh, I'm up here. Things that we are going to um, kind of touch on in Romans chapter 3. So that is what we are looking at. And once we um, have a chance to kind of dive in here a little bit, I am going to pass out another sheet that will just kind of clearly define some of those terms that are on the sheet. But those questions at the end will just be discussed. So that will just be for you to fill in actual leisure. Of course, this is not a class I am not taking papers afterwards. This is just for your edification. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I have um, the NIV, which is a nice commentary that I have that I'm working from, but I have some different versions here on my nice iPad. So I am going to pull up New King James, which is kind of my favorite to read. Romans chapter 3. All right. And do you normally go through and everyone read, or how do you usually conduct that? Okay. Do you want to do it? Okay. Go ahead. Let me tell you. Everybody feel comfortable reading? Okay. All right. So I just think it helps um, get everyone involved. If right. you have to pay attention and you actually have to read. <laughs> because if not, you can kind of zone out and yeah. and not really stay on track, right? And so let's just we'll right. take a verse and read. Um, so I'm going to start Romans chapter 3, starting at verse 1. I am reading from the New King James Version. Feel free to read from whichever version you have. What advantage then has the Jew, or what is the profit of circumcision? Brother Mark, we're going to right, uh, Thank you very much. No problem. Yes. Um, much every, much every, um, I'm sorry, I apologize. No, you're good. Uh, much every way, uh, chiefly, or is it chiefly? No, chiefly, you're right. Uh, chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what, what in the same did not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without, without effect. 
certainly not indeed let God be true, but every man a liar, yeah. as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and may overcome the evil our charities. Our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly. What shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using a human argument. Verse 6. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? Verse 7. Someone might argue with my threshold in hands. Exodus chapter 19, 
um, or actually the commandments are listed in 20, but it talks about him um, going on Mount Sinai in chapter 19. So, and then number two was they were the race through whom the Messiah came. So, you know, we all race proud, right? That's one of the big things about, you know, feeling like well, he was one of us because we're all, you know, one for all and all for one. Yes, sir. Well, in Revelation, it has, you know, it has indeed, I will make those the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but they lie. So, and we could go into a whole nother thing on it. So, I'm not saying I have a strong opinion one way or the other because unless I study something for myself, I can't say that that's what I believe in my heart. What I believe in my heart is Jesus died for all. I get to be one of those that he died for. So regardless of the other debates, the word is the word. That is, so I'm not claiming that, that I don't know what these I'm not claiming that I don't know what these facts. Who call themselves Jews and they not? Well, I'm just saying. I'm the word is the word. He said the word is the word. I go by the word. I, well, that's what you should talk well, about. But, but I think you're talking about something different. You said they call themselves Jews and they're not. Yeah. Somebody's calling themselves Jews and they're not. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Is that, this is a whole big open discussion here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. According to my brother's point, I think what he's saying, I, I think I have not, well, I read some of the questions. So, not all the Jews were that the coach was in, but not all of them were that children. Some of them were saying they were not. So, in my opinion, uh, according to what the scripture that I read, mm -hmm. having said that, if you're talking about in general the entire Jew, right, the race, the mm -hmm. ethnicity, the, the race of Jew, the entire Jew, then I don't know how you distinguish the differences. But if you're talking about the Jew that that, that God's children, although not all of them are God's children, maybe all of them were chosen to be, but not all of them were worshipped. The God of Moses, the God of, uh, let's just say the God of uh, the Israel. Yeah. And you know the Israel name was changed, Jacob name was changed to Israel. So not all of them are Jacob children, perhaps. Well, uh, is that what we're leading to, sir? I'm not who sure. Who calls Jews? Who calls themselves Jews? Well, oh, you're talking, you're talking about what I said about well, people saying that they're the real Jews, Jews or sure. whatever. So, so in, if we, if, and we're not going to get off the subject yeah, too much yeah. and debate that, but yeah. um, so there, just like he was saying, there are people, like there's the religion and then there's the people. Yeah. So just like um, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., when he converted over to yeah. being, you know, the Jewish religion. So you can take on a religion. Yeah. Um, and not necessarily be born of those people. Like people can take upon assimilate black culture that doesn't make them black. It just means they assimilated the culture. So I'm not going to get into it because I don't have an answer for that for that question. That's not what we're debating tonight. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's like they made the whole Bible white. Oh. oh, okay, okay. I see where you're going with that. Okay, I see where you're going. Okay, I see where you're going, where you're going with that okay. now. Okay. Okay. All right, so number three. So yes. since we got off subject, Pastor Vance, what well, were number one and two? And then I'm going to read number three. Well, I missed number one. one. <laughs> Pastor said he missed number one. Okay, so number one were they were entrusted with God's law. So that was the benefit of being a Jew. Number two was they were the race through whom the Messiah came. Yes. And we know that that was um, prophesied in Isaiah chapter 11. And then number three is they were beneficiaries of the covenant. She's blaming. Oh, I'm just talking about benefits of being a Jew. We're still on verse number two. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're still on verse two. I'm just, I'm just talking about some of the benefits when they say what are the benefits. Okay. Well, I have a question then, if I may. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Before you go into the benefits, because I don't want to forget that. You mentioned covenant. Mm -hmm. Was the covenant between... Uh, God and, um, and, and um, Abraham? Abraham? Yes, or so was it, was it all Jews? Yes, 
Yeah, was and all, yes, he'd be a father of yeah, yes, was all Jew came from Abraham? All Jew came all Jew descended from Abraham? Is that all Jew came from Abraham? Or do they come from some time? Uh, that's what I want because the covenant was made with Abraham, right? Mm-hmm. right. So it's all Jew. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the lineage. That's the question. Uh, from Abraham stems Abraham is a, 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 all kind of religions claim Abraham as their father. Yeah. Islam, um, Christianity, and another one. They claim Abraham as their father. So right. yes, everything, all the Jews came out of Abraham. Okay, yes. Thank you. Thank that's you. why God said help you. Yes, indeed, indeed. Thank Me you. too. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is there are certain covenants. So we know that a covenant is an agreement. You have your part and God has his part, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So we, there are lots of different types of covenants. Like we're saying, if we believe that Jesus came and, and was the son of God and died for our sins and we accept his sacrifice, right? Then we're saved. So that puts us in a covenant type of relationship because if we don't if we don't believe it, we can't take part of that benefit. So just like with marriage, it's a covenant. So when you break the covenant, you've not only sinned against your partner, but you've sinned against God because ultimately you're talking to God. You're saying, me and you, I'm a great, yeah, I'm this one, yeah, this, I think this is it. And so you go on, and, you, and you're going to get into a covenant with this person, but ultimately, you are accountable to God. And if we think about that more, yeah. Yeah. instead of just, you like, because you know my famous thing back in the day was, I don't like divorcing people. Don't be playing with me. I'm the, because <laughs> I've been divorced a couple times. Yes, sir. The pastor preached about that Sunday. 
She made a mistake by adding something that did not say. You're right, it has to be so. Then you stop blowing up. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes. That's what he's talking about. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's he shocked. He's shocked. Human 
an argument. And there was, so it's like, okay, I'm not, this is not what I am saying. I'm just being, you know, kind of sarcasm, throwing it out there to, to say that. So in the commentary, it says that some may think that they don't have to worry about sin. And why is this? It's God's job to forgive. This, this is what the commentary says. This is not what you said. Oh, okay. uh, it says it's God's job to forgive. So of course he's going to forgive me. That's what he does, right? He's a forgiver of sins. Yeah. Isn't that what he does? That's what he does. Okay. And then number two, it says God's so loving that he won't judge us. He loves me. Why would he judge me? He loves me. He knows my heart. <laughs> and then number three says, and he's so deep in sin, these are people's excuses, y'all. It says, sin isn't so bad, it teaches us a valuable lesson. It's, it's not that bad. It's funny, some of the things that the world tries to sneak in on us and our children. I was watching this cartoon with one of my grandkids, and the character said, well, sometimes lying just feels right. And I said, what? What are we watching? And it's a cartoon, these kids, and one was pretending to be something, and the other one backed them up, and they're like, well, why did you, like, have my back on that? He's like, oh, sometimes lying just feels right. And I'm like, that's not the lesson we want to be taught. Mm -hmm. So we really have to be mindful of what we let in. And, you know, pastor was preaching. See, he's been in my sermon for, like, a long time now. And so now I'm like, Lord, am I supposed to preach something else? Because pastor already preached his message. Confirmation. Like, a few times. But, um. Confirmation. Confirmation. So, um, but what he was saying, he made this really helpful Oh, the thing that we take in. So we have to guard ourselves with some of the things that we take in. We just kind of absentmindedly. Honestly, one of my guilty pleasures is like action movies where a whole bunch of people can jack up. I, I don't know. For whatever reason, that's my thing. I'm like. <laughs> action movies. So I'm like, I'm just like, I'm like, oh, they got that. Oh, they got this. Oh, yeah, I don't know what it, Like, I don't know what, why that gets my goat, but this is one of my guilty pleasures. But you have to. You have to really be careful about all the stuff that you let in. Well, it's going to have your, your love for many loves. You'd be like, man, I'm good. Commercial. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, Whatever it's going to be. Enjoy your love for many loves. I'm going to get off the subject. Uh, uh, but the last night I was at home uh, and I was watching BET, and I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. Sinner's Welcome. Huh? It's called uh, Sinner's Welcome. Sinner's Welcome. <laughs> All right, but just being careful with what we, so no, we're not trying to nullify anything that God is doing, and no, we're not going to keep on sinning because God is a forgiver of sin. Anything that separates us from God. So if we are not, if we're doing this instead of God, it's a sin. So it doesn't have to be fornication. It doesn't have to be murder. It doesn't have to be lying. It could be watching TV instead of reading your Bible. If you knew that was what you was, if that's your point in time, and you're doing something else, then you're sinning against God. You've already made a covenant with him and said, okay, every morning I'm going to get up and do this. I'm coming to you with prayer and Bible study. And instead, I'm looking on Google or I'm on Facebook or whatever else. Anything that separates us from God is a sin. And it can be different for each person. Now, there are some that are recorded in the book, and of course, that's just universal. But there are some that can be something, maybe it's sinful to me because I've let it grow out. And it's not simple to pass the dance. Maybe that's not the same because we're all individuals. <clears throat> but anything that separates us from him, it says, sinner, no matter how many excuses they make, will have to answer to God for their sins. So at the end of the day, we're accountable. We're accountable for the things that we do. We're accountable for the things that we say. I think
think right now that's one of the big things with our youth is people being held accountable. Everyone wants to point the finger at why they're the, the way they are. Mm -hmm. My parents did this, and so I, I ended up this way. Or my school failed me, so I ended up this way. My community failed me. My peers failed me. My employer was unjust. Um, I had a lot of bad breaks, so I had to turn to drugs and alcohol or whatever. I was lonely, so yes, I had to sleep with every man I met. I mean, I, you can't keep using all these excuses. At some point, we have to stop and just take a look at ourselves, and that's why it's so difficult, because it's seeing yourself really how God sees you like, I love you. I'm always love you. Even though you're kind of, you know, you're a pig in the hole in the, in the pen right now. I love you. I'm loving you through all that. But I do need you to take a look at how dirty you are right now. Yeah. I need you to take a look so we can, you know, start making adjustments yeah. with that. So we'll leave that there. All right. Now, moving on, verse 6. Oh, we talked. Oh, no, we didn't. That one. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God, oh God, judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? And we know that all sin separates us from God. So that kind of answered that one there. Why not say, as we are being slanderously reported as saying, and as some claim that we say, let us do evil that good may result. Their condemnation is deserved. So why is their condemnation deserved? We kind of just touched on that, but. <coughs> exactly. Because you, God shows us his perfect love. God shows us the, the way he wants us to go. And when we reject him, that's a slap in his face. That's a slap in his face. Just like uh, when we set out food. We spent all day cooking it. And then your kids say, like, oh, I don't even want to eat none of that. That, that don't even look good. Or, Why you make that? Why did you make this, that, and that? <laughs> Slap in the face. Just ungrateful. Yeah. Just ungrateful. And that's us humans. But that God is so much more. God is so much bigger. He's so much more generous. He gives us new mercies day by day. He gives us chance after chance to get it right. But what do we do? Lord, I messed up again. Okay, forgive me. I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> if we only ate, <laughs> if we only ate every Sunday, like a lot of people only read their Bible on Sunday, if you only ate once a week, you would be malnourished you'd be starving. So then we wonder why people are malnourished and starving in the world. What about the people that never read the Bible, that never open up a Bible? Of course, they are... They're definitely spiritually starving. They are, they are spiritually starving. They are spiritually starving. All their kids. All their kids. Oh, I thought you said Somalia. I thought you said Somalia. Yes, and that's how we look spiritually when we don't we don't study God's word, we don't read his word, we don't take in his word. That's our spiritual need. So what happens when you only drink the milk? You only digest milk, and that's all you're drinking, all you only drinking liquids. Yeah, exactly. Your brain, your whole brain, your whole thing that's supposed to hold you up doesn't develop. It's most Christians do that, you know. They all you know, they're just getting these things to be a little. And then we wonder why any little thing in life comes and knocks us down and we can't handle it. I thought God was supposed to love me. I thought God was supposed to protect me. I thought God made me all these promises. He said, 
When you ask, it will be given, right? Mm -hmm. So I just ask. And it's going to be given. That's what I So if I may, is that okay? Yes, yes. So there was no clause um, and, 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 and the ask, ask to shall be received. Mm -hmm. There is no clause, there is no, there is no if it's God's will, or you can ask for whatever you desire, he will give it to you according to your own desire. He has nothing to do with his desire. There is no clause. No, there is a clause. There is a clause. There is a clause. As long as we leave, then you shall receive. Is that what? I don't know. First thing, you There is a clause. So there is a clause. And that's what I was getting to. That's what I was getting to. James. That's a James. Okay. So that's the one I was thinking of. Um, so if you're asking with wrong motives, then no, he's not going to bless you with that. Even some of the things that we ask, and it's not for us. If it's going to mess with God's plan for our life, he's not going to give it to us. So he's going to say, you know, you know, and you're thinking this is a, a prayer request that would never like, I asked, and he never gave it to me. But it's because that wasn't for you. He had something better for you, something that he tailor-made for you that may not look like that professional basketball uh, contract. But it was something better. You get to be a pastor of God. <laughs> exactly. But the thing is, you know, when he gives, he can give you some stuff. But people lose their mind. It takes them away from God. Yes. And like a lot of people, when they, they hit the lot over or something, they're like, they don't need nothing. You know, so they don't ask God for nothing. Most, most of the time, you ask God for stuff when you really down. You know, a lot of times you've got everything, and you don't have no, no trial or tribulation. So that will bring us. It talks about, on that sheet that I handed out, Psalm 32, verse 
give generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like the wind of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double minded and unstable in all they do. So that's one of the Not even one. And we talked about that briefly before. Yeah, 
There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. Wow. There is no one who does good, not even one. Goodness. Their throats are open graves. Oh, Their goodness. tongues practice the sea. Oh, I thought I was like, oh. and every time I read it, I'm just like, oh. and the, and the Bible said it's simple. Yeah. Because he has. 
saved me from myself before. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be standing here today. I should be dead. For more than one occasion, because I was trying to take my own life. I didn't want to be here no more. But God. But God. Step in. Thank you, Jesus. But God. Thank I made stupid decisions. Thank you, Jesus. But God. But God. He said, I got something else for you to do. You can't, oh my goodness. <laughs> they have that picture on Facebook with that angel like this. Oh, and it yeah. said, This is my angel. I'm like, that's my angel right there. They be like, oh my gosh. They get with this. <laughs> Boasting, it is excluded on what principle? On that of, of 
observing the law? No, but on that of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Yeah, yeah. Is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too, since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. So that was a lot. And it talks about functions of the law. So first thing that the law does, it shows us where we went wrong. Mm -hmm. Because, like I like to say, when, um, you, run, you run stuff up against the plumb line of God's word. So it shows us where we're, mm, we landed a little to the left, but we're landing a little bit to the right. So it shows us where we went wrong. Second, the moral code revealed in the law can serve to guide our actions and hold up God's moral standards. So not just after we've already made the mistake, let's use it in the front end so that we don't have to make the mistake, that we can stay on this road, that we don't have to do things. That's one of the big things that frustrates me with my kids sometimes. I'm like, I've made enough mistakes to where you should have like a whole road map of where not to go. It should be like X is here, X is there, Michael's there. Don't drive down none of them roads. Mom already did it. You might as well go and go down this road. But they just yeah. have to have that trying spirit. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to try it myself. Mm -hmm. I, I, I say that, but what I used to tell the kids, like, the parents tell you not to go over there, but you just have to know what makes things tick. Mm -hmm. And you go over there, and next thing you know, you're in trouble. Yeah. And we, we want to save our children. God wants the same thing. Wow. Mm -hmm. He wants to save us all the heartache and pain. If we really lived our lives by God's word, by his precepts, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. How many of the things, I'm telling you, I know the stuff that most of the stuff I've gone through has been my own fault. Mm -hmm. Because I was somewhere I wasn't supposed to be. I was doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing. Amen. Not, I wasn't just like, let's do, I was, you know, following God. Oh, my God, I'm my head. No, that's not what I was doing, but I'm going to follow my head. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, you know, what I take from this uh, is the fact that if he was completely for the law, mm -hmm. then there would not be a Gentile because the law was missing. For the Jew. Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy and I'm delighted for the fact that Jesus came. Yeah. And through Jesus, grace and grace will be um, uh, we abolish the law. And can you imagine how you would, how can someone keep up with the law? Every time you mess up, you have to quit making something else. Pastor, how many laws did you say no. there were that? So you would be a 613. Indeed. So um, to conclude what I was trying to convey is the fact that yes, the law was put up in point. But God and God was right. He could, he could, he could, he could not be a fire. It was not sufficient. So therefore, you are right according to everything that you are mentioning. The law, I'm, I'm so happy because if you if you go, if really uh, Gentile. Can you imagine? That's the point. Gentiles. I wasn't a Jew. I wasn't a born Jew. Right. Mm -hmm. But Jesus Christ. He's going to be grafted in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. When you see that born Jew grafted and then you turn it and see that branch and it's not going that way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't feel by yourself. Because he's not going to be able to talk to you. Yeah, not by yourself. There were you want to know a lot of stuff. Amen. Amen. There were a couple things I wanted to bring up real quick. Um, so we know that we were declared not guilty. We were declared not guilty. And it talks about justified means being declared not guilty. So in a in a court of law in the man world, that if not guilty can just mean that, um, or if the charges are removed, then you it's like you were never accused. Like it's not on the record, they drop it off, right? But in God's world, you never sin. But we know we did, in fact, sin. 
So we know that we are guilty. Yes. We are guilty. It's not that somebody railroaded us or, you know, it wasn't our fault and we're trying to get off. And, you know, we were guilty. guilty. We were caught red handed He was right there every time we put our hands in the cookie jar. He was like, I, I. Guilty. We were guilty. But still, through Jesus, mm. not guilty. Pardoned. Pardoned. Oh, okay. Okay, and then it talks about um, redemption refers to Christ setting sin, uh, sinners free from slavery to sin. That in the Old Testament times, a person's debt could result in being sold as a slave. The next of kin could redeem him or buy his freedom. Christ purchased our freedom, and the price was his life. Amen. So he loved us enough to purchase, purchase uh, us back. So he died in our place because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life yes. through Christ Jesus. So he paid the penalty of our sin. His sacrifice brings pardon, deliverance, and freedom. And it talks about the forebear in his forebear. And so I have to look that up because I don't think I've ever really tried to read through this part really kind of in depth. So it said God presented him his sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forebear, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. So in his forebear, talks about an intentional delay in collecting the debt. Because he hadn't come yet. He hadn't died for the sins of all yet. So they still get, you know that, those commercials, act now. And you can still get X, Y, and Z. And act now, and I'll also throw in this water bottle. And act now. So it was an intentional delay in that. Because he still wanted those people to be able to act now. Because he's still redeeming them. He was still redeeming them, those that follow God, that had God as the center of their life. Like Brother Mark was talking about earlier, to the people that were faithful to God, to those that would pray to God, that that was their God. So he had already made a combination. A lot of times we're doing things on the back end because God already knows the beginning from the end. He's yeah. doing stuff at the front end. Yeah, yeah. See, he already knows. So it talks about good deeds do not make us uh, right with God. And we all know that. We can do good deeds till we, you know, they say, well, they're a good person. You mean to tell me they're not going to go to heaven? They're a good person. Well, did they accept Jesus as Savior? Because only the accepting of him as Savior, if, so if you tell me this, He's the sacrifice. So he had to be slaughtered in my place. Mm -hmm. So I have to accept him to take part of that covenant relationship, that yeah. promise. Yeah, right. So if I don't take that free gift that he's given, then I'm left out in the cold, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody's out handing out $100 bills and I'm not present, I didn't get a $100, right? So I didn't get to take advantage of that. That may be a really simplified version of it, but at the end of the day, you have to make a decision. It's a decision that you're going to accept him or not. Not because of what someone else did, not because of what you saw, not because you think all the people are hypocrites, not because this, that, and the other. At the end of the day, it's Jesus that you have to have a relationship. It's yeah, not me. Yeah, yeah. It's not pastor. Yes, for a second. Like even if you're there, like we give out food, and then people come up, and they're there, they see people getting food, they exactly. see people getting that. No, I don't need that. Uh -huh. You know, they didn't accept it. They, they didn't even know right it. there. They saw it and did not receive it. And they did not receive it. Yeah. But they were there. The last Three. days. Mm. They're going to. They feel they didn't.
these are people that just are, they're just giving their life on gun. No hope. They have lost hope. And it's just so, and he's like, Mom, I lost another friend. Because he said, do you remember so and so? And I thought he was going to tell me he saw him or something. And he was like, I said, no, maybe you can show me a picture of him or something. He's like, no, he just, he committed suicide. And I was like, mm. another friend? It's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. So we just have to keep spreading God's word, spreading the hope, spreading an answer. Jesus is the answer. Yes. To a question you don't even know that you're asking. All right, and we're going to close up, but the last part I'm going to read it says, Why does God save us by faith alone? Faith eliminates the pride of human effort because faith is not a deed that we do. Faith exalts what God has done, not what people do. Faith admits that we can't keep the law, as we talked about before, or measure up to God's standards. No matter how hard we try, we can never just do everything right. We just can't. We can strive to, and we should strive to, but we can't. And number four, faith is based on our relationship with God, not our performance for God. So it's not, well, you know, it tells in his word. Well, I was prophesying in your name. And I did this and I did that. Depart from me. I never did mm -hmm. But I was doing all this for you. No, you weren't doing it for me. I didn't know who you were. Wow. So thank you for sharing in this Bible study. It was very wonderful, all the participation. Hopefully on those um, handouts there, there were just a couple of, um, there were some definitions and where you could find information about them. The ones in purple, I added at the last minute because they were some I was reading. The other ones are listed in these Bible's commentaries, which is why I tried to cite it in there, so I'm not taking credit that I wrote that stuff in there. But the ones in purple were the, words, the ones I added from just our text. So just to give you some more food for thought, and hopefully you got something out of the Bible study. And if I may, to yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you can ask the job, and to quickly add, you can only please God to be faithful. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 There's no other way. Amen. 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 All right, Pastor, will you pray out?
of Job. Um, no, don't give me no hints. I just had it. In my mind, we're, like, we're, we're uh, talking about women. Psalms. Proverbs. No, I'm going to that. that.
start of the church. Okay, uh, let's oh. see. Um, wait a second. Uh, it was written by Paul. There's, there may be something else. Uh, but, uh, somebody knew something. Um, uh, it was a city. Uh, there was a lot of sin and idols in this place. This is the same description from that book. Um, uh, for this, this the, written, I have not seen, ear have not heard. Uh, um, the book of the love is the patience of the Christ. Uh, yes, yeah. it is. It's a disaster. She <laughs> gives another book of love. love. First and second. If you have an insurance policy, then you've got a fraud. The insurance said, well, if you've got a fraud, it's a... Ain't that it. Because it's in, in the Old Testament, you would say chronicles, but in the New Testament, it's not chronicles, it's yeah. cor 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 yes. <laughs> Second Corinthians, Galatians, Philippians, the Denver. We started the learning. He said, first Thessalonians. Second Timothy. Isis. Philemon. Moses was a God was talking. Hebrew. James. His son, name, would it? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no it's uh, no. not his son, but uh, no. No, no. Uh, no. It's right on. Upon mm -hmm. this plank, I will build my ch church. Another name for rock. Another name for, yeah. Another name for rock. Jesus. Uh, he, he said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And upon this rock, I will build my temple. And he oh, thought. Oh, my he, he he kept, yeah. You're welcome to water. Yeah. And he walked on the water. You're welcome to water. Yeah. First yeah. Peter. Oh, second Peter. <laughs> I'm like, third John. Jude. Revelation. You know how to act? What you say? All right, great stuff tonight. Again, great job, Evangelist Jim. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Any comments, closing for me? Anybody can do for me? Heart? This is for the Not only did we start the spoken to our spirits through your servant evangelist Gina. We pray, Father, that you would replenish her. And Lord, we thank you for the knowledge that we uh, ascertain tonight. And we thank you, Lord, for touching our minds and, uh, Lord, just for speaking to our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for uh, just allowing us to feel your presence and learning more about you so that we can serve you better. Lord, we pray that you bless each and every individual that's here today, bless each home that's represented. We pray, Master, that you would just continually do what you do because we love what you're doing and we thank you for doing what you do because nobody can do it like you do it. We thank you, Father God, you're awesome. And we pray that as we leave this place that you would protect us, that you would keep us, that you would guide us, that you would guard us, and that you would use us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 The last thing, I knew there was one more thing, sacrifice. On that sheet it says an act of giving something value for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy. Uh -huh. So Jesus saw us as very important or worthy. So he gave himself. Jesus wow, that's, that's a sacrifice. sacrifice. For, for the sake of something regarded as more important or worthy. So he counted us worthy enough to die for. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>